Hello guys again. So uh, now we will solve another problem regarding section 6.4 which uh, uh, in which we discussed the method of sections. Now we have this uh, this truss or this structure. Now uh, you could see that we have some external loadings of 4 kN, 8 kN. We have supports here, we have pin support and roller support here. Now this question is, is a problem in the book. 633. It's asking it's asking us to determine the force in members AF. So this member AF, the member BF, this member BF, and BC. So this member. So these three members. Now, as you can actually guess, uh, uh, so I'll just pick this blue black color. So as you can actually guess. The best place to take a section is should would, should this section or this line should pass through these three members. As you remember, we said that the maximum numbers of or the maximum number of members through which our section should pass must not exceed three. So now we have three members. That's okay because we have three equations of equilibrium. The other thing that we said is that we should actually check whether or not whether or not we need to find the support reactions guys look now if we are working with this section then we can actually work with the upper part the upper part of the truss right the upper part in the truss so if we are working with the upper part then we actually don't need to care about the uh, support reactions here so simply speaking we just perform our equations of equilibrium on this section and just ignore uh, these supports actually exist because they are not going to affect the upper portion of the truss. So now we draw our uh, 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 section. So here, sorry for my bad drawings. I don't have uh, best drawing skills. So here we have uh, E we have D, E, D here, we have C at this point, and F. What's going inside? We don't actually care. We care about the external loadings only and the forces inside the members that we want to measure or calculate. So this member here, E, C, is, is, is not of our concern because we are not calculating anything here and it's not affecting our members. Now, we have the first member that we should consider is this member. Hmm? This is F. Uh, the, this member. In this member, we have a force of co we can call it F F A. Here, the other force is F F B. Right. In this member, and here we have. The, th the third force that the question is asking for F inside member CB and as you've seen and as you've noticed probably we have assumed this direction like the forces leaving the joints right leaving the joints meaning that we assume they have a uh, tensile nature now we extend the line of action of our forces so uh, this is point A this is point B and this one should be passing through B as well and we can also just draw this line just for for dimensions wise so this is 1.5 meters here it's the same as this one 2 meters on each side 2 meters now we have this force uh, I would just rather write it in red 4 kilonewtons and here we have another force of 8 kilonewtons. Okay, I guess that's it. I hope so. Yeah, but sorry, really excuse my drawings. Uh, I hope the, 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 the idea uh, is uh, present though. Okay, you see guys. We didn't actually need to calculate these uh, support reactions because they're out of the question. We don't care about them. We don't work with them. 
they are uh, of you could actually calculate them but it's, it's just, just too much information you don't need this information so this information is not required because you are you are going to solve for these forces FFA FFB and FCB that's it now as I said our golden rule the golden most important rule is the moment so now assume this direction is positive for your moment or the moment around which point now the easiest point to start to start with is point F because the moments caused by these forces would be cancelled out zero not cancelled out sorry they don't cause any moment zero moment no perpendicular distance so we take the moment around point F is zero so now we can easily find this force so now this force causes nothing this force would cause nothing as well this force would cause moment definitely now but since it's going clockwise so it's negative so it's minus 4 multiplied by the distance 2 meters right the perpendicular distance now we are left only with our unknown uh, force which is FCB is also going count, uh, clockwise so it's also negative minus FCB multiplied by this perpendicular distance which is 1.5 meters equals 0 so immediately now we see FCB will, 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 will give us a, a, negative, a negative sign meaning that the direction that we assumed at the beginning wasn't the correct one so this is now minus 5.33 kilonewtons or it's 5.33 and it's compression so FCB is going upwards actually going into the joint okay now We think about another point where we take moment about it. So if I were you, I would take it about point B. Point A is fine, but then you'll have a problem finding the perpendicular distance between F, F, B, and A. So look, look to look, look for a point where it would be easy to find the perpendicular distance. So now F, F, A would have a moment about point B, and the particular perpendicular distance is 1.5. FCB would have zero moment and FFB will have zero moment as well because both of them are passing through point B. So now this direction is positive. Hmm. Summation of moments about point B is zero. So we have one, two, three forces causing moment about point B. So now we have minus four, the, this force multiplied by the distance which is four, two plus two, multiplied by four minus 8 you see minus because it's going clockwise huh? minus 8 multiplied by 2 hmm? now this force FFA is going is going uh, or co is causing counterclockwise moment right guys so this should be positive so plus F F A E multiplied by the distance this distance is 1.5 equals 0 so here we will get a value of a positive actually a positive value of FFA FFA will have a positive value of 21.3 kilo newtons so if it's positive then it's tension you okay now so we found FFA FCB now we are left with this force now, as just, just, just exactly like this, the, the previous question that we solved in the previous video, this distance was 1.5, right? 1.5. This distance is known as 2 meters. So this length, this length is from Pythagorean theorem, this is 2.5 meters. This length, hmm? 2.5 meters, the length of this side. So now, as I said, we still have one more equation to work with, or actually two more equations. Summation of forces in the x equals zero, and summation of forces in the y equals zero. You could choose either. If I were you, I mean, I would, I would, I would usually prefer to work with the x component. So we need to find the x component for this force. So the x component should be here, right? And this should be what? So this x component, this length is 1.5 over this length that we calculated 2.5 multiplied by F F B 
this is the x component of this force you just now go ahead and you say in this direction summation of forces in the x equals zero you have four plus eight right going in the positive direction now what else do we have now we have our force for sure plus 1.5 over 2.5 f f b right and then is that it one two three forces that's it equals zero so now as you can see or as you can actually anticipate ffb will have a negative value ffb would be 20 kilonewtons negative or this is positive 20 kilonewtons and this is compression meaning that ffb is going into the joint in that direction that's it you see how simple is that so always to minimize and cut the time required to solve your problem always think first what is the section where is the section that we need to take and see whether or not you actually need to calculate or solve for the support reactions in this case they have no effect whatsoever on our members here because now this part is out of the question when we took a section that means that we just care about this part we assume that this part as if it does not exist sure it does we we, we took the, the lengths that two and three and one one point five we did care about that we took moments about here and here but the internal forces in the members in the members or for example here in these members we don't care about this internal force we just care about the external forces the external forces and the internal forces in the members that we care about now these uh, support reactions we don't actually care about them because they're just they are just out of the question they are out of our section this is our section okay so this is how we solve such kind of problems very easy just need to practice I left several examples in the book for you to solve uh, they are solved anyways but try to solve them the examples that are solved uh, and I did solve these problems which are not solved actually so uh, if you have any questions let me know thank you so much for your time and I hope you have a nice evening bye bye